Hi everyone, today we are going to learn about anatomical concept behind the ulnar paradox. In any classical nerve injury, higher or proximal the lesion leads to more deformity when compared to the distal lesion. For example, in the radial nerve injury, when the lesion is above the level of radial groove, it leads to wrist drop, thumb drop and finger drop. If the radial nerve is injured at the lower level, below the level of elbow, then it leads to only the weakness in the extension of fingers, that is the finger drop. Most of the time, the wrist and thumb is extension is preserved. But when we see the ulnar nerve, if the lesion is at the higher level, then the deformity will be lower. See here, here the ulnar nerve is injured at the level of elbow or above the level of elbow. Here the deformity will be very mild claw hand. Okay. So, when we see the same thing, uh, ulnar nerve injury around the level of wrist, then it leads to severe deformity like a claw hand. Okay. So, that's why there is a, uh, in the classical nerve injury, when the lesion is at the higher level, the deformity should be more. But here, when the lesion is at the lower level, the deformity is more. That's why the name is given paradox, ulnar paradox. So, logically, self contradicting statement. So, to understand the concepts of this ulnar paradox, you should know the muscles supplied by the ulnar nerve. Out of which, these are the muscles supplied by the ulnar nerve in forearm and hand. Out of which, two muscles are more important. That is the flexor distorum profundus, medial half. Okay, Lateral half is again supplied by the median nerve. And third and fourth lumbricals, that is the medial two lumbricals, is supplied by ulnar nerve. Okay, And first and lumb second lumbricals is supplied by the median nerve again here. So, this is the flexor distorum profundus and here the medial half is supplied by the ulnar nerve and medial two lumbricals are supplied by the ulnar nerve. If we see the function of these muscles, the flexor distorum profundus produces the flexion at the distal interphalangeal joint. Okay, so this is a proximal, sorry, proximal, middle and distal phalanx. So at the distal interphalangeal joint, the flexion is happening happening because of the flexor distorum profundus. When we see the actions of lumbricals, it produces flexion at the level of metacarpophalangeal joint and extension at the level of interphalangeal joint. If there is any injury to these uh, muscles, okay, that is the parallels of flexor distorum profundus, there will be weakness in the uh, flexion of distal interphalangeal joint and in the lumbricals, when it is paralyzed, the action will be reversed. If we see the uh, action of lumbrical is flexion at the level of metacarpophalangeal, but when it is paralyzed, it will be extension, and uh, usually the lumbricals will cause extension at the interphalangeal joint. During the time of paralysis, it leads to flexion of the interphalangeal joint, so it leads to claw hand. Coming to the concepts of ulnar paradox, when ulnar nerve is injured at the level of wrist, only the medial two lumbricals are paralyzed. Okay, So, we have already seen when the lumbricals are paralyzed, it leads to extension at the level of metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at the level of proximal and distal interphalangeal joints. So, it ultimately leads to partial or ulnar claw hand. Okay, the reason we have seen in the previous slide. If the injury is happening at the level of elbow or above the level of elbow, it leads to, apart from this feature, there will be also additional involvement of flexor distorum profundus. So, the flexion at the level of distal interphalangeal joints also affected. Okay, so in, the, in this the, in addition to the claw hand, here this flexion of the distal interphalangeal joints also affected. So, when the flexion is affected, 
it will ultimately leads to extension so the claw hand deformity will be less but if we see the amount of muscle uh, paralyzed will be more almost all the muscle supplied by the ulnar nerve will be affected but the uh, effect of paralysis of lumbrical is nullified by the uh, loss of flexion of the distal interphalangeal joints so the higher the uh, level of ulnar nerve paralysis it leads to less deformity okay but still there will be more amount of muscle paralysis but there will be less amount of deformity so this is the concept concept of ulnar paradox thank you for watching the video if there is any doubt in this video you can leave in the comment section i am planning to post the similar concepts of clinical anatomy in this channel if you want any particular topic in the clinical anatomy let me know in the comment section thank you